Most people don't need much of a reason to explore the world, as the travel to another country is exciting enough for anyone. But for me and many other people, what brings us to all these places are roller coasters. While this has taken me around most of the United States and a little of Canada, I've also made the somewhat random trip to Guatemala. While most coaster fans don't know anything about what is here, all these random obscure coasters you run into have their own location and story. Without any prior knowledge, you would assume they would have some wacky worms and not much else notable. While there is a fair share of worms, these parks are far higher quality than you may expect and deserve their own spotlight. The parks of Guatemala are operated by a larger group called Ertra, which was founded in 1962 by Ricardo Castillo Sinibaldi. Like almost every entertainment institution after 1955, he was heavily inspired by Disneyland. Rather than just an amusement park, this was founded as a way to repay the Guatemalan citizens for their hard work in a difficult time for them socially. While Guatemala is a very poor country with very little resources, Ertra and the citizens would come together over time to build a wide variety of high-quality parks that were specifically made for leisure of all people. Their flagship park, Chetalul, would even receive the very prestigious IAPA Applause Award in 2008, the highest honor for excellent quality and guest service. Before discussing the main Ertra parks, there are three wacky worms around the city to discuss. The first we rode was located at the La Aurora Zoo, right next to the airport. This was probably the most impressive zoo I've ever seen, with seemingly every animal on earth, and just to the right was the small Esquilandia Park with the worm. I don't know why, but this had to have been the fastest wacky worm I've ever been on, as it flew over the hills and down the drop. It was crazy. The second was way up north at a park called Hippodromo del Norte. I'm not sure what happened here, but this park looked like it got hit by a bomb with a giant crater, but there was another worm there that didn't look too bad. While not as fast as the one at the zoo, the ride operator would grease up the track in the station every lap, which was funny to see. The third was located literally in the middle of the road, a short walking distance from our hotel. If you're trying to get all the coasters in the country, these are all very easy and cheap to access, but I do believe they all close around 5 p.m. After those minor detours, you'll find the first Ertra Park, and the only one located in Guatemala City. Mundo Patapa is the most Disney-like park, with a castle evoking a Magic Kingdom park and colorful fantasy theming and many children rides around. Immediately upon entering, you'll find a theme through the Ertra parks and Guatemala in general, how clean everything is. I've never been to parks with more spotless pathways, as employees are always sweeping, and the bright colors around really make this a beautiful park in the city. Roller coaster wise you'll find four Zamperla coasters, with a powered coaster named Dragon, and a standard 420 STD spinning mouse named Raton LaRocco. Unfortunately for us, You'll also encounter the only coaster we missed on the whole trip, Moto Bala, which is a moto coaster you can find at parks such as Darien Lake and Luna Park. This is a fun launch coaster and it's a shame we missed it, but it's probably one of the best in the country when it's open. The last is one of two custom layouts in Guatemala in El Relampago, a small scale Thunderbolt coaster. This coaster begins with a vertical lift into a steep drop with speakers playing a thunderstrike as Relampago translates to Bolt of Lightning. The coaster then completes three hangtime filled inversions with a loop, immelman, and corkscrew. This station even has some theming, as well as a nice plaza with a lightning bolt planter, and rounds out this very solid coaster lineup. Outside of those, you'll also find a custom Zamperla Rapids with a vertical lift that was also unfortunately closed for our visit, a soaking log flume, as well as a drop tower named Rosca Celios. I can't even figure out what specific model this is, as the closest thing is the Zamperla Z-Max at Sarkaniemi, but this one didn't spin. This is basically an SNS shot and drop tower, but we didn't know, so it was quite the surprise when it took off initially. The operators also held us at the top for what felt like two minutes, 
allowing us to take in the view of the city, but also building suspense, and definitely made it a highlight ride at the park. Along with a bunch of other Zamperla rides, there is a fun dinosaur-themed playground, as well as a ferris wheel with good views in the back. While not a full day destination, it's definitely one of the highest quality family parks I've been to with super friendly staff. Now was the time to venture outside the city, as four hours west is the main resort in the country. Featuring multiple highly themed hotels, two theme parks, and a water park, this is really like the Walt Disney World of Guatemala. If Mundo Patapa was like Magic Kingdom, the main Urtra Park, Chetulul, is certainly their Epcot. Themed to multiple countries around the world, this truly immersive park is full of incredible facade theming and lush greenery throughout. You enter through a Guatemalan-themed plaza with a large fantasy-themed land to your right. Here you'll find your first coaster, a Zaire large Tivoli named Chacanoy. This smooth coaster with a long train is always fun, and the staff was super nice here, taking our photo in the station as we flew by. Deeper inside, you'll find some newer family flat rides, and the next coaster, Raton Feliz. Located in a beautiful Caribbean plaza, this was the biggest surprise coaster of the trip. At first glance, the ride with connected Zamperla mice cars doesn't look like anything special, but this ride spun non-stop and goes through two laps. I have no idea how more parks haven't bought this model, as it's more comfortable and out of control than a wild mouse, while still having the hairpin turns and fun sensations. Going over a bridge into the main area of the park, you'll find a massive Mayan pyramid icon. While you're not able to go inside, you can walk all around and it's a great photo opportunity. To your left, you'll find the most eye-catching theming of the whole resort, with huge facades of Spain and Italy, and a large shoot-the-shoot rides with a crazy drop and beautiful theming. You'll also find a Zamperla Nebulas, a French area with large theaters, and a Swiss area with two large rides. Esther Gensen is a wild hoose topspin over the water with fountain effects, and the other attraction was the main reason we made the whole trek out to Guatemala at all. Avalancha is the last coaster in the park, and by far the biggest in the country, as the last operating Intamin 8 inversion coaster. This imposing ride towers over the back of the park with a solid white color scheme, and features a well-landscaped path underneath. The layout features an intense loop, cobra roll, and double corkscrew before a signature triple heartline roll. This iconic inversion is extremely disorienting and worth the trip alone if you don't want to head to the UK or China. The ride operators were also kind enough to let us tour under the ride here, and seeing the coaster fly around with no fences in the well-themed icy landscape was the most memorable experience of the trip. At the furthest end of Chetulul, you'll find a second entrance that leads to the next park, Chaco Mill. Unlike the other parks which are themed to regions outside the country, this water park pays tribute to the Mayan architecture and themes of Guatemala. And I have to say, this is by far the best water park I've ever been to. Not only does the jungle setting create a fantastic water park vibe, every single slide has themed staircases that I've never seen done anywhere else. The top slides in this park are also incredible, with the most popular being the Tamagas Water Coaster. This is actually the only whitewater LSM water coaster, and features unique rafts I've never seen anywhere else. The ride begins with your standard water coaster dips and launches, before launching straight into the largest drop on the ride, before an enclosed twister section into a pool. Right next to this you'll find a few body slides I was too scared to ride, including the Vuelta del Jaguar, a pair of trapdoor looping slides, and Caida Rapida and Chibalba, a triple down and straight drop slide. Wrapping around those two is one of my favorites, Mula Luja, a crazy intense family raft slide that nearly sent the rafts over the edge on every turn. Along some other more standard slides, including a popular immaculately themed wall slide, you'll find the amazing Los Rapidos. This mat racer is the tallest slide in the park, and features a crazy airtime pop before a huge drop over a hill. 
This was easily our favorite slide in the park, and we completed the massive stair climb at least 10 times to keep riding. The final park of Urtra and Guatemala is the brand new Chejup. This park is turning just five years old this year, and the modern design is very apparent upon entering. Set a ways back from the other two parks, this park is certainly inspired by Animal Kingdom to continue the Disney World influence. This may be the strangest park I've been to, as the mix of attractions are very different and still growing. This can be described as an adventure-style park, with horse riding, rock climbing walls, and a ropes course, but also more traditional rides, including the final coaster of the trip. El Rugido del Jaguar is a custom Vacoma Junior coaster that was actually relocated from a mall in Guatemala where it was named Voltron. You would never be able to tell, as the ride was brilliantly painted to blend in with the trees and blends perfectly with the foliage. The coaster has a simple but fun layout, and travels through a cave with audio of a jaguar roar. Since the attractions are very different here, you're actually required to buy a punch card, with each attraction requiring different numbers of punches in order to experience. We also rode the fun tube slides which had an awesome temple facade, and on our way out, we found the park was constructing a log flume. This is now open, and looks to be one of the coolest and most impressive log flumes I've ever seen. While Guatemala may not be your first, second, or even tenth choice for a coaster trip, if you have the option, I would highly recommend it. The prices all around the country are incredibly affordable, and every person we interacted with were incredibly kind. The parks were all super clean and high quality, and the coasters were all fun with no super bad rough rides to be found. The trek to Chetulul from the main city is certainly the hardest part, as we reserved a driver, and the ride back took over six hours, which seems to be a common occurrence, but it's definitely worth it once you get out there. I had an amazing time and would have no hesitation revisiting in the future.